What's happening guys? Hope you're doing very well. In today's video, we are going to do a Bitcoin analysis. And because it's been a while since the last YouTube video, I actually want to run through the long term analysis as well as the short term. So we're going to start with the long term. I'll explain my bias with regards to Bitcoin, which spoiler alert is essentially bearish at present. I'll explain why in detail. And I will also put my invalidation point on so we know when we could be getting signs of turning bullish again. But as I say, at present with the information coming in, I am concerned for Bitcoin. I am concerned that it has potentially a lot of downside to come. So first things first, just wanna run through the long-term count that I have from the Genesis. So looking at it from an Elliott Wave point of view, the major count, I see this run up here into 2013 as a major wave one finish. This was our wave two, three, four, and this was our final fifth. Now you can argue there's some ambiguity over this latter part. There will be some people that think we've bottomed out here and we are, have got a new all time high on the near horizon. As far as I'm concerned, this is very likely to be a fifth wave top at this point here. There's, there's two potential ways of looking at it. Regardless, it looks like we've got downside either way. So I, I anticipate there's a wave one, two, three, four here and then fifth the other argument is the four actually finished here and it's a triangle so an a b c d e and then we've got a triangle fourth wave and then the fifth wave actually finishes here so that's our essential five wave top and then we're, what we're seeing is an expanding flat corrective pattern so we've got an a b c and the c is obviously looking pretty extended uh, arguably just making a, a one, two, three, four, five to come down. Sorry, that's not very clear on the weekly. So on the uh, daily, so we'd look at it as an expanding flat. So this isn't my favorite count. I'm just putting it out here as an alternative. So we're looking at an A, B, and C, where the C is a one, two, three, expanding flat four, and then we go for a fifth, another leg down. Okay. I don't think, I think that looks very irregular in my point of view. The A and B are very short relative to the C. I don't like it at all, but that's a potential alternative count. As I say, I don't particularly like it. I think this is looking a lot more regular with our wave five top here. The only other way to look at it, and I can't completely rule it out because technical analysis will always give more than one perspective, especially with Elliott Wave. Yeah, the alternative count is a one, two, three. And then again, we'll keep our four here. But the other argument is the fifth is still in play. So we've got the one, two, three. This is all an expanded flat four. And then we're on for the fifth, which there's a reasonable argument for because the move up following the bottom of the four right here uh, has looks impulsive, this move up here. And the leg down here has looked corrective, suggesting that we've got another move up to come and we're still looking strong. So I appreciate that argument still being out there, but still, I don't think we're leaning towards that count. OK, and I'll explain why. So that, that's the kind of bullish argument. And if we do start to trigger any invalidation points to the bearish analysis that I have, then I, I would be happy to switch to that count. But at present, I think we're leaning towards the count that I have where we've got a one, two, three, four and a fifth up to here. Now, obviously, it can look very irregular on the log scale. This uh, where the wave one looks humongous relative to the others. But don't forget, we're on the log scale. So the linear would look as such. So this would be the wave one, two, three, four, and then extended fifth, as you can see, made up of five waves, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now the reason I wanna go through this is to kind of determine what we can expect in terms of the degree of the retracement from the all time high. Because as you can see, Bitcoin, historically, when it shoots up in these parabolic moves, which it has done again and again and again, yeah, all the way back to its genesis, did it here, did it here, massive retracement. This was a massive retracement. This was a massive retracement. And we're just, in my opinion, we're gonna see exactly the same thing. And the question is, have we seen a massive retracement? Now, I'm not gonna say it's not a big retracement, but is it meeting the kind of satisfactory requirements for a Bitcoin retracement? In my opinion, it hasn't. I do still believe there's plenty more downside to come. So yes, in terms of price, it has come down a fair way. But I think also in terms of time, it's got a more prolonged correction to follow. And I, as I say, with the Elliott Wave count, I still think there's further downside. So I've marked out two horizontal lines, as you can see here on the chart. That's an 80% retracement and that's a 90% retracement. 80% is at 13K 
and 90% is at around 6.5k. All right, so just keep those numbers in mind or keep the lines on the chart. But I want to keep it in mind because at first people will call me an alarmist for having these very low potential targets for Bitcoin. But what I want to demonstrate here, make it very, very clear, is that this is characteristic of how Bitcoin moves. It moves up in a very unnatural way with these parabolic spikes and they should be followed in an unnatural way manner also with a very aggressive looking correction people will put out the argument well bitcoin is more established now it's got more value in society it doesn't matter if it's gone up in an unnatural way and gets incredibly overbought there's going to be that massive amount of fear at the top and you're going to get that huge amount of selling you, that's never going to change it doesn't matter what asset it is so just to demonstrate wave one all the way back here if we i've got the fibonacci retracement tool here it's got the fibs and i've also put a 90 percent level on so 90 percent is here it's not a fib level i just wanted to put it on so you can see how far we retrace so it's in ex excess of 90 percent retracement that wave two back there okay so that's the first one just to look at this wave four again wave fours are generally more shallow in their retracements if we take the bottom at the end of wave two top of wave three and we come down to the 0.786 so even a shallow what we expect to be a shallow retracement wave four comes down probably close to 80 percent and that's meant to be a shallow retracement all right then we've got this major wave one so all the way from the genesis to the top and again we're in excess of an 80 percent retracement here so we're seeing the theme already establishing you can see we can look at the wave three here how much did that retrace so again at least 80 percent yeah, so that's the general theme that we're seeing again and again. Even this one, two here, if you do accept it to be as a wave one and two, that has retraced again in excess of 90%. So that's why I have got these levels on the chart. They're just ballpark figures. I, I can put on a more accurate target, but I just want to put those levels on so that people aren't just thinking, you know, I'm a, a perma bear or incredibly bearish on crypto in my opinion this is looking very very realistic that's a potential 13k target or six and a half k target yeah and we can fine tune the targets in in a moment yeah i still maintain that we've got further downside so if we just go back on our log scale now and what i would generally do as you can see this hasn't gone very gone on very long so far we're talking about a whole at least 10 year move up to 69k we've not really gone on so when did we top out that was back in november 21 so what we've done about an 18 month correction, which is very little in terms of the 10 year move that it took to reach its all time high. So no doubt we've got further downside to come in terms of a correction. Yeah, so the way I'd be looking at it, so the count that I have for the correction is the WXY scenario, where we've got a W, X and a Y to follow. So for that, let's expand this a little bit. So I've got that as a three way move down to make our W, and then we've got a three, three, five count, hence the impulsive look to this, the five wave nature. Always be cautious with a five wave move. If it follows two threes, a three and a three, you've got to be very, very cautious of it potentially just being the tail end of a flat pattern. So in this case, it would be an expanded flat, three, three, five. The fact that the, the move down finished on this three wave move was very concerning in my opinion. It would look a lot more bullish if we had a nice impulse finish to the downside and then we have five waves up because if we've got a five wave down and then a, another five waves up, that's giving you a lot more likelihood that the five waves up is impulsive and part of a bigger impulsive pattern altogether. The fact that it's followed a double three gives you the impression that we're looking at a big flat pattern here and it could very well come down. So that's the, the general overlook and then we're looking for another three wave move down to follow. Now I've got this horizontal, sorry, vertical line here showing a potential time frame which is November 2024. Uh, obviously the most obvious catalyst around that point is the US election around that point which could potentially cause a reversal and then I want to put on this uh, pitchfork, which is so basically a shift pitchfork, first three pivots, first, second and third, shift pitchfork, log scale, lower median line confluence with a 90% retracement at the time of the US election, November 2024, we've got the six and a half K target around there. So that's a ballpark figure right now, just for the long term potential downside on Bitcoin. And you can say it's an alarmist view. That's fine. 
but uh, I still see that there's we've got weakness here in Bitcoin. So that's the major high time frame analysis. Now we need to focus on the lower time frame analysis because we're sitting at a very, very key point. And for that, I just want to pull up the Bitcoin uh, Bitstamp chart because that's where I generally analyze the lower time frame counts. So that's the NASDAQ. Let me just pull up Bitcoin. All right. So these two pitchforks have been incredibly key. So don't forget, still looking at the WXY. So there's your W, A, B, C, expanded flat X, and then we're on for the Y. Okay. So I have that move now, that move to the upside. Let's go on the daily to see this a little bit better. I have this upside move having completed. Yeah. I see that it's likely to roll over now. Now that we've lost this lower warning line, that is deeply concerning for me. And now we're just adhering to this shift pitchfork, which very easily could collapse on itself and turn into a start following a more uh, steeper gradient to the downside. But for now, it's following this pitchfork. And it's this pitchfork that I'm using to get an idea of whether we are starting to see strength again or strength once again in this market. I would want to see us come above this upper median line, this down sloping upper median line, if we're to have any faith in the bullish move here because we, you can see the upper median line the lower median line are marking out the parameters of the trend and so if we can get a break above the upper median line fantastic that's looking like we could take out that high and if we do take out that high i've, I've spoken about in recent videos there could be a move on to 36k okay we'll talk about the horizontal level of 36k in a moment but for now I'm leaning bearish. I'm not too sure we can take out that upper median line. I think we could very likely further collapse on ourselves. And this level that we currently sit at at around 25.5K is very important. Okay. The reason being, if we go on the weekly, pull on our simple moving averages, I'm sure you've recognized this 200 week simple moving average many, many times. It's been spoken about a lot. You can see historically wonderful support, 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 flips of resistance, again tested as resistance. And then we had the big Marabozo candle on the weekly, which flipped it and gave everyone the impression that it could now be a bullish market once more. So now is the real test. We've had a corrective move down. Hopefully we're going to use it as support for the bulls. We've had one test, two tests, three tests, four tests. Now we've got a weekly close beneath and if we get any more further candles beneath, you don't want to spend too long beneath the 200 week simple moving average. Otherwise, it's going to lose its strength as a supporting line. So it's a very, very important time. What happens over the next couple of weeks will be very, very important for crypto because this could act as a ceiling here on crypto. If we spend any further time, you know, as I say, another week or two under this line will be deeply concerning. So there's the that very important um, simple moving average. The other very key indicator that I will use is these camera pivots. And I've mentioned it at length historically these weekly camera pivots often mark out the tops and bottoms you can see so yeah wonderful support of the s4 subsequent year r r4 resistance r3 support was eventually lost subsequent year found resistance at the r3 support at the s3 uh, this year did completely disrespected the camera camera pivots to be honest and i believe that was because we had our all-time high that came in then we started collapsing once more, a bit of support at the S3 this year, finished the year under the S4. So that generally gives the impression for this year, because when we're on the weekly time frame, these camera pivots represent yearly periods. So there was an argument for resistance at the R3 because of the weakness in this previous year. And the fact that we broke through, there was then that potential to move on to the R4. So the R4 was a potential target this year at 35k and that's why i believe if we can get back above that upper median line of the pitchfork that is holding this downward bit of price action i believe there's a move into 35k at which point i would still say there's a huge obstacle to overcome and that, that could still send us downwards so that's there's one obstacle that we currently sit at yeah and then the next obstacle would be this level 35k if we can clear that then I would then start talking about the potential for all-time highs. But there's two very big obstacles. There's the current one, then there's 35K. Okay, so this Camarilla pivot is incredibly important uh, for it to overcome if we are to have a high time frame bullish outlook uh, and continue higher from here. Not only 35K, if you just look left, you can see this bit of consolidation here, very important level uh, that would need to be overcome as overhead resistance. So those are the key Camarilla pivot lines to look at. So just taking those off now, bringing back our annotations. These are the two pitchforks I consider the most significant. So we've spoken about it from an Elliott Wave point of view, the pitchfork point of view. 
Uh, we are seeing a bit of dissociation also between crypto and stocks. Stocks are actually not showing any real weakness just yet. I still think stocks are in trouble because of the fact that we've still got inflation that we haven't got to grips with. Interest rates are starting to cripple banks. Um, so it's a very difficult situation that they're facing. And I think eventually banks may end up defaulting, which could trigger a very big financial crash. But that's a little bit early to say we're not seeing those tapping, topping patterns on the TA looking at the US indices just yet. But on crypto, we are. We are seeing that weakness, in my opinion. And that could be facilitated by the SEC. The SEC is obviously clamping down on crypto, which is not an ideal situation. Maybe that explains a, a, the kind of dissociation we're getting between crypto and stocks right now. But um, Bitcoin and Ethereum are probably the most bullish looking assets for, for crypto right now. So the altcoins are looking a lot worse, which can be explained just looking at the Bitcoin dominance chart. If we look at this chart here, you can see we've consolidated within this range for a good while. And now it looks like we're breaking out to the upside. I do think eventually it's going to come down because I think this is just we've come down, we're going to correct that and then we come down again. But for now, there's upside here that I see on Bitcoin dominance, which basically means we're going to see more weakness in alts relative to Bitcoin. So as I say, Bitcoin of all the uh, crypto assets, not of all of them, but in general is looking pretty strong if you're comparing it to altcoins as a whole. So yeah, crypto on the whole is looking incredibly weak at present. But if I were to flip my bias and see a more bullish bias once more, it would need to get back above this upper median line. So that is our invalidation point. That's the level it needs to get back above. But at present, as I say, I'm looking at this as a major WXY. That's your X wave completion. We've broken out of this pitchfork to the downside. That's one bit of weakness. The 200 week simple moving average we currently sit beneath. That's another bit of weakness. And yeah, so far we're just following this downward pitchfork. If we can suddenly get back above it, fantastic. But until then, I'm maintaining the bearish bias. So keep an eye on this pitchfork. It could be a very volatile week this week. We've got a few uh, catalysts. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday this week. So we start with CPI Tuesday, Wednesday interest rate decision, Thursday retail sales and then Friday you've got your consumer sentiment index. So a lot of volatility this week that could come in and who knows that could add some downward pressure on stocks which could further exacerbate any downward moves on crypto. So let's wait and see how that plays out. So I think we will probably wrap it up there and I'll hopefully be doing more regular videos on crypto. So all right guys take care. Thank you for your attention and watching through to the end of this video. Now I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently and I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. The Works consists of thorough and jargon free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to the works while subscribed. For more information on what's included in the works or Cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again and until next time, take care.